you know, it really doesn't take much to get me going. Uh, came home from work today and uh, flipped on Fox News, and I get some guy, not sure who he is, anyway, uh, sounded like he must have been a, uh, Democrat, a Democratic commentator of some sort, and he's describing the Obama camp, the Obama campaign, as looking at the middle class as being the the real movers of the economy, the ones that really uh, the vital element of the economy. And he was describing the uh, Romney camp <coughs> as looking at it uh, from the standpoint of the rich, the uh, wealthy, the big business corporations uh, being the the real movers of the economy. And first off, I want to say that I, I don't think that the Romney camp really... I, I think they understand where the wealthy stand in the, the whole scheme of things, and I'll elaborate on that later. I, I don't think they believe that it's all about the rich. It's all about the rich. Uh, and here's why. While it's... Well, let's, let's look at statistics. Uh, I forget what the actual balance is, but I think small businesses and whatnot, and keep in mind, small business owners, oftentimes, their business may be small, but they make hundreds of thousands a year. They, they may very well make a, a salary, a personal income, the owner of the business, high enough to put them into the category of wealthy. So here's a guy that he makes, let's say, four you know, four hundred thousand dollars a year, but at the end of the year, he only gets to keep, say, you know, seventy thousand of that, because all the other four hundred thousand goes in, you know, all the other, uh, well, at that rate, it's about you know, three hundred and thirty thousand goes back to pays employees' wages, buys uh, new material, new products, new machines. It goes into upgrading the uh, the the sales floor or the, the shop floor. It goes into paying employee insurance and benefits. It goes into paying taxes, uh, paying for uh, you know the yearly or quarterly reviews, checkups, all that good stuff. So he may he may actually make quote unquote make enough to make him a mil a a, uh, a wealthy citizen. But at the end of the day, he's not taking home much more than you and me because he's paying most of that back into the company. He is the company. So, thereby, he makes what the company makes, but he only keeps for himself as his personal income, as his personal salary, a portion of that. So, from the get-go, the, the statistics are a little skewed because a lot of average Joes who just happen to run a business, who hires and employs their friends and you know family and neighbors, gets described as some millionaire. Uh, but more importantly, if you look, I think it's somewhere around, I've heard a variety of things, but I think it's somewhere around uh, 60 to 80 percent of businesses, something like that, are small businesses. Let's, let's, let's include them, fine, in the small, the, uh, what would you call it, the middle class category. Let's be honest. Fine. What about that other 20 percent? Well, you can hate them. You can want to wipe them off the off the face of the earth. What would happen? Tell me. What would happen if 20% of our GDP just vanished? Disappeared? Do you have any idea how big our GDP is? Do you have any idea how big a fifth of the economy is? That would be like cutting a slice out of New York and just nuking it. Getting rid of it. Cutting down everybody in the streets in that chunk burning it, torching it, cutting a hole down to the center of the earth and just pitching it into the lava. Do you really think we can get rid of this 20%? More importantly, the reason I think the Romney camp and other conservative, or at least Republican, uh, analysts and uh, commentators 
have a positive look on the wealthy is because the wealthy are the ones that pay the uh, middle income families. Who do you think signs the paychecks for people like me? I actually make way below uh, the... Actually, I think I'm, I'm below the poverty rate. Now, for an individual, possibly not. Uh, I make about 14000 a year. That's why I'm hoping to rake in this year. Uh, but the my boss, and in fact my boss's boss, owns, I think, seven or so stores, uh, hardware stores. I'm sure he makes a lot of money. I'm sure his income taxes at the end of the year are pretty goddamn high. Why? Well, he he runs a company. He runs seven stores, each with uh, you know, 25, 30, 50 employees. And most of that money has to go back to them. Now, obviously, he probably makes a little bit bigger cut than, say, my manager who makes, obviously, a little more money than I do. And by the time you get up to being Bill Gates, by the time you get up to being Steve Jobs, you're making a pretty good cut. But that's because you've climbed up that ladder. You went from the guy that built the thing, that designed the thing, started a company, or maybe you're the guy that kept going up each step. Each time somebody a little higher up left, you made sure you were qualified for that position. And ultimately, you made it to the top. Don't you deserve that little extra cut? But that's beside the point. If you put these wealthy people at a disadvantage, what happens if my boss suddenly has to pay more in taxes? What happens if I'm the worker at the bottom of the totem pole? What happens if I'm the new kid that they just hired, and I'm hoping to pay down some of my college debts by working over the summer? What happens... When the government says, well, we're going to have to charge an extra $7.25 uh, an hour worth of taxes to your business. Well, guess what? Goodbye. I'm gone. No job. People have to realize, and the Romney camp, conservatives, I'm not necessarily saying Romney's a conservative. I think he's a lot more conservative than uh, our current occupant of the White House by far uh, they grasp this idea that it's worth making sure that the middle income people are protected but equally to the wealthy because it's the wealthy that give them jobs if there weren't big companies like Apple how many people do you think Apple employs how, and it's kind of funny you don't really hear any of that tax the rich when it comes to CEOs of company like Apple who make the iPod the same uh, electronic device that the majority of the occupiers and liberal whack jobs listen to. Kind of funny that you don't really hear a criticism of how rich Apple executives get. But oh no, 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 those oil companies... Well, it's not like the occupiers don't drive cars. It's not like a lot of these left-wing hacks don't drive cars. So why do the oil companies get the get the shit? Well, because not only are they wealthy, they're they're not part of this ideology, this ideology of spending all of your life in a fantasy. And that Apple facilitates living in a fantasy. Uh, the oil companies facilitate business. That's why they're hated. But I, I think the point you need to walk away from this with, what I want you to get from this, is that it's fine to look out for the middle income people. It's fine to look out for the poor. In fact, they, you know, granted, I think charity can do a lot of the poor. We need to take care of the poor. And we need to take care of the middle income people. And thereby, you have to take care of the wealthy too. And that doesn't mean giving them money. And you don't give money to anybody. But you have to treat them just as well as you treat the middle income. Because otherwise, the middle income folks are not going to have a job.